light up here. Holy smoke. So, good to be with you. And uh, um, so I want to share a little story with you. Uh, and, uh, I got born again about when I was eight years old. I may have shared this before, but it's always good to repeat your testimony. So I was born again at a kid's camp when I was eight years old, and then just thought that was good enough. So I lived good enough for about, until I was about 19 years old. And a, and a friend of mine who was a believer, he challenged me on my salvation. And how do you know you're saved? John 3, 16, everybody knows that. And for God so loved the world, right? So, and I was, that's what the, I was basing my eternity on the fact that I knew John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. So I went home and, and I really dug into the Bible and, and, and nothing made sense to me. And I asked God, I, got, I said, God, if this is for the smart person, I want you, but I don't understand any of these things. I said, but if you'll teach me, I will learn. If you'll teach me, I'll learn. And next, <laughs> next morning I woke up and he says, well, do, just go to the beginning of the Bible. Just start reading Genesis. And so I did that. I started reading Genesis and I found out that God was good. I read about how God was good to this guy named Abraham, and he made a covenant with him and blessed him. And I thought, well, yeah, that's, that's what I want to, I want to be in relationship with God. And that started my walk with the Lord. And as things progressed, the, the, there came a time when I saw that Jesus, you know, I'd kinda, I was kind of a fanatic, and I saw that Jesus fasted for 40 days and 40 nights. I thought, well, I don't think I can go 40 days. But maybe I can go five. Maybe I can go five days. So I, so I went to the pastor of the church at the time. And I says, yeah, do you know anything about this fasting stuff? And he says, no, I've never done fasting. Uh, you know, you better check. You know, I don't know about it. You know, kind of like, you're going off the edge there, Carl. So, so I thought, well, if Jesus did it and he survived for 40 days, I can do it for five days. So I did that. I, I went on a fast for five days, and I found out some things. And, and if it's okay if I share some things with you, what I found out in that, in that time. So what I found out, and I'd like to call Ben, Dan, and Dalton up, to the, up here. I found out a little secret about how we're made up. And, 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 and Okay, we're going to call this, I'm going to call it an audible. You're now the mind. Okay. This is the body. This is the mind, come here, <laughs> and this is the spirit. Inside of you, you have a body. You are a body. You are a spirit first. You have a mind, a soul, a will, and emotion, and you live in a body. Did I say that right? Spirit. You have a spirit. You are a spirit. You have a soul, and you live in a body. Does that make sense? Inside, you're a tripartite being. The Bible called calls you. You're you're th three in one. You, that's you. And, and when you get born again, this part of you becomes born unto God. You become in the family of God. You have to be born again to communicate with God. That's why salvation and being born, having that born again experience is so important because that hooks you up with God. In fact, when you're born again, you're, you're, you're um, one part redeemed. These guys here, they're not really redeemed yet. <laughs> your body <Wow. laughs> and your soul and your will and emotions, that's not quite redeemed yet. But this is your down payment. The Bible says you got a down payment for eternity. So you're hooked in with God in your spirit. And the, and the mind and the spirit, they're kind of like real power twins. They, they're, they're very similar. They're, they operate a lot together and they work together good. But the information comes from God and works between these two guys. And this guy, <laughs> this is your flesh. Everybody say, I got a flesh. <laughs> it was created, it was created to be selfish, to survive. It, it's, it's, it'll tell you when it's hungry. It'll tell you when it's cold. It'll tell you when it's tired. It will tell you when it's... You know, everything has to be right. He's kind of fussy. <laughs> he doesn't, doesn't, doesn't really like vegetables or anything like that. Why you did know. you call it on? <laughs> 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 
So, and, 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 and the, the will and the emotion, he can be a rascal sometimes because he's always testing the boundaries. Like, like when, you, when you're driving and the speed limit says, says you know, it's, it's 70 miles an hour. And you say, well, I got, I got five miles of grace. <laughs> So I'm going to take it. I think I can get away with this. This is, you know, he's always like in his mind figuring out and, and conniving. And, 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 and so, so the key is to live out of your spirit, man, and dominate through your mind to your body. Tell, bring this in line. And, and a, for me, when I was fasting, I found out how much of a rascal my flesh was. Yeah. Sorry, Ben. <laughs> so anyway, so and, and you know, you do it without food, you just think, holy smokes! And and we live in a day and age that that it, it's it's really challenging with your just your cell phone. You think about how how much your flesh and your your mind is hooked into that thing, like it'll 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 pull you away. But the key thing is, you do not want to. You want you two thirds makes a majority, right? You don't want these guys to hook up and stay hooked up. So it's a constant <laughs> battle. You want these guys hooked up, controlling the flesh. So, so I'm going to teach today a little bit on how to, the lies we believe, what they come to these guys, and what, how we can fix it. So, is that okay? Yeah. All right. Give you guys a hand. Now, now G, a perfect example of the body, soul, and spirit and the temptation <coughs> that comes on us is, is found in the temptation of Jesus. How many have read your Bible and where Jesus was, was you know, fasted for 40 days, 40 nights, he became hungry, and, and the devil came to tempt him with food. Came to him and tempted his flesh. The first thing right off the bat. And the thing about it is when you fast for 40 days, at the end of your 40 days, you are, you're kind of on life support. You know, it's like <laughs> you need food right then. It starts, you know, you go on a fast, you, you kind of, you feel pretty good after three or four days. You, you start getting kind of supercharged, and it's, it's quite an experience. But then you hit that wall, at, they tell me, at 40 days, and it's like, Mayday, mayday, we need food, you know, that kind of thing. We're starving to death at that point, you know. So, so, you, so, you, so it's at that point the devil comes to Jesus and says, Well, if you're the Son of God, if you're the Son of God, command these, these stones to be bread. And what I like, the, the thing that's great that I want to get a hold today and, and, and emphasize today is Jesus' response It is written. Everybody say, It is written. That's your, that's your key for victory. It is written. As long as you can say, it is written in the face of a lie, you will succeed. Amen. It is written. Everybody say, it is written. It is written. it is written, Jesus said, man should not live by bread alone, but every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Then the Satan came and tested Jesus a, a second time with, a, with, with kind of more, more or less what I consider challenging his mind, his will, his emotion, put him on top of the temple, said, hey, if you're the son of God, if you're the son of God, throw yourself down. Because it says the angel will be given, give you charge over you unless you dash your foot on a stone. So wouldn't that have been a cool thing to do? See, the ego is really involved in the mind. Like, like you, know, you know, this would be a great display of who I am. I'll just float down. Angels will catch me. Everybody will know I'm the Son of God, and I won't have to go through all this stuff. And, 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 God, and Jesus says, it is written again. It is written, you shall not test the Lord your God. And third time, he takes him up to a tall mountain. He says, all this has been given to me. All this has been given to me. And, and all you got to do is worship me. Just fall down and worship me. And, and so he was tempted. Jesus was tempted in all three things that Adam and Eve were tempted with. Food, the apple was good to eat, or whatever fruit it was. 
might have been a fig. Some, some people think it was a fig because, you know, when they found out they were naked, they just grabbed the first thing and made their garment, fig leaves. Anyway, everybody thinks it's an apple, but it might be a fig. Who knows? <laughs> Theological b- debate here. So, so anyway, where was I? Matt, where was I? Right, right. It comes to the body, and, and he says it's good. It, they saw that it was good to eat. They saw that it would make him wise, which would be your mind, your will, and emotion. And he saw that, that they would be like God, so testing that, that spirit man inside of Adam and Eve. They lost it. They disobeyed God. Their disobedience handed the title deed to the earth and all the dominion that had begin, been given to Adam and Eve and just forfeited it to Satan. At that point, they committed high treason. They forfeited their, everything they had, their authority over the, the earth. And Satan had that power to tempt Jesus and say, I, this is all mine. All this is mine. If you'll just fall down and worship me. And he says, you will not have, it is written, one more time, it is written, you will not have any other gods before you. It is written, it is written, it is written. When lies come at us, we need to say, it is written. That's why knowing the Bible is so important. You know, it's, it's, it's kind of like we're up here, I'm up here, and, and you just think, how do, you, how, do you, how do you teach? How do you teach people that, you know, because we're all, we're all equal. We're just really a teacher or a pastor or a or somebody who's up here is just a little bit further down the road than you and you are. We're like two, two or three stoplights ahead of you. If we go through a town following somebody because they know where the direction they're going, yeah, we're just like two or three stoplights in front of you with the turn signal here, go there. So that's all I'm trying to do today is just say, you know, I'm two stoplights in front of you. <laughs> so, <laughs> so anyway, um, first lie that we believe. It's noble to worry. Someone would say, well, if I don't worry, who's going to worry for me? <laughs> it is not a noble thing to, believe, to worry, but we think it is. We almost, we almost spiritualize it, that it's, that it's noble to, to worry about this or worry about that or the other, any other things. Uh, but the Bible says, let's look, look and say what the Bible says. It says, cast your anxieties on him because he cares for you. Where, where are you to put your worries? On Jesus because he cares for you. The, the, the worry that we worry about is a trap. The worry, have you ever read the, a Bible, so or so is the word? The so or so is the word, and the Bible says immediately, Immediately, Satan comes to steal the word. And, and it's one of the things that he does. And, and, and Satan comes for, for your word. So if you're, if you're a, a, a plant or if you're a tree, what's easier to pluck out of the ground? It, in a seedling or a tree? I'm Plant. talking Matthew here. Plant. Yeah, just pull it out when it's young. So Satan will come to you with a worry, with a care. Oh, you better worry about that. Big word, perseverate. Perseverate, a lot of times we'll perseverate over a, a worry, a finance. Even, even something, Satan comes, attacks your body. Your body, you know, what's, what's, going, what's going on with my, some people call that your earth suit. You know, your earth suit that your soul and spirit get, get around in. That's your earth suit that, that Satan's attacking in your, in, your, in your flesh. Your body is a, a vulnerable part. It'll be, it'll be sick. Jesus came along, and, and every person that, he, that he, he didn't say, well, I can't heal you. He heals. He heals those who came. And he would say, this person that Satan has bound, lo, these many years. And he, he would heal them. He would, he would heal 
their bodies. And God will heal you. That is, that is your right. The Bible calls it the children's bread is healing. You can say it is written. It is written. When, when the lie comes to you that, that you know, you, God wants you sick. God wants you uh, in, in poverty. Poverty is a huge lie. It is, it, and, and talk about worry. When, when, when you have lack, it'll just, it'll just worry you like nothing else. I don't know, am I, am I just talking to myself or you ever been there? I can remember, I, <laughs> can I tell myself a little bit? I was, I was, had, a, um, had been given a business and started a business with, a, with another gentleman a small business, and, and uh, we're kind of par- partners in it, but he was a senior partner, and I was just helping out him starting the business. And he came, and he, 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 it was in 2009 when the recession was going on, and he, and he didn't want the business anymore. He just didn't want it. And he, sa- and he said, I will give you all the, the machinery and all that kind of stuff. You just take it, and... Because I don't want to do it anymore. So I, I'm given this, just handed this business. Now what do you do? You know, I, I didn't, I didn't have the the um, any of the resources that I had before. I just had a business, and so I had to, to had to <coughs> start start the business, and it didn't start off very well. It was a big concern of of mine, and and I brought my family through it, <coughs> and it's and it's a concern. So what do you do in the midst of that? You're tempted to worry. But God says to cast your cares on him because he cares for you. You will all, will all be in those situations. And, and worry is a good, a good place. To, I'm not saying, well, don't worry about it. No, pray about it. You know, you can do that. You can, you can pray about what you're concerned about. But, but don't become the illegitimate God of your problem. If your problem is consuming you, there's nothing you can do about it because you're not God. God's God, you're you. And God does, didn't build us to worry. He didn't build us to have a care. He, he built us to have fellowship with him and to cast our care on him because he cares for us. Does that make sense? God wants to take your care. Jesus said, my burden is easy. My yoke, it's light. Light means light. It's not a heavy burden. It's a light burden. Jesus wants to help you and I. So anyway, back to my, my little business that I started. I, li- I live right next door. I, at the time, I lived right, right next to a very Christian man, but very well-to-do. Businessman, very well-to-do. And here I am. I got my business, and this thing is struggling. It is just struggling like n- no one's business and uh, um so <coughs> so i get invited to go to a, a fundraiser with this very wealthy christian businessman and and seriously i had to to buy the ticket on a on a um my visa card <laughs> so I, i'm going to a fundraiser you know and and i got this business i'm sitting you know almost front row with this very successful businessman and and I don't have a dime. I mean, I'm really. And then then to make things worse, he reaches over and says, "Carl, God is just blessing my business. <laughs> you know, we're just we're just doing so good, and and we're just just raking in the dough." And I'm <laughs> and I'm thinking, "Oh my," you know. And and so 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 those pressures come to you. They, they come to you and, they, and they, they, they create this worry and they create this, all this anxiety and God says, cast your care on me because I care for you. See, see in your life, you're going to run into these people who just, just seem to be blessed by God, just anything, you know, and what do you do? Well, just like you do at the, the license place where you go get your license, you, you, you grab a number and you go sit down. With God, that's the way it is. You grab a number... Your number's coming up. Don't, don't get covetous of the guy who's got the big business. 
and he's prospering, you know. You got you to just like, God, I'm rolling this over on you because you care for me. I, I'm not going to carry this care and this burden about this business. And I can remember, remember going, setting, it was a, it was a warm, warm up Indian summer, and I was sitting out in the patio, and God spoke to me. He says, Think you're about re- ready to make a U-turn. Because I'm just lamenting. I'm just like, my house is falling apart. I need, the house needs painting. You know, I, I, I built the house with the wrong bricks. The bricks are crumbling. It's just a mess. You know, the, I, got, I got woodpeckers that are pecking holes in my siding. You know, it's just like everything that could go wrong seemed to be going wrong. And the Lord spoke to me. And the Lord will speak to you. And, and he, said, he said, you're about ready to turn a corner in this. But, you know, the key is to, to stay in that place of fellowship with the Lord and, and cast your burdens on him. And things did turn around for, for us. We, we, we got over it. But I'll tell you what, there's those times you just, you just like, and you, and you got those lies coming at you, you know. You're not going to make it, you loser, you know. And we all got them, and I got them to this day. They've changed, the names have been changed to protect the innocent, so to speak. <laughs> but it's, 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 still, it's still there, you're trusting God. We never get away from that. We never get away from needing to trust God and needing to cast our cares upon him because he cares for us. His yoke is easy. His burden is light. You can take your burdens and your cares to the Lord. And he's there wanting to answer that. If it's finances, if it's family, if it's, if it's health, take those burdens to the Lord. Take him up on his promise. Amen. The Lord was speaking to me as I was preparing for this, for this lesson. He said... Um, Tell, tell the people that, that this, is, this is not a system of do's and don'ts. The Word of God is not a do's and don'ts thing. It's a path. It's a path that you walk on with me through life. And the Word will direct your path. Thy Word is light into my path. It's a, it's a path. And you know what? And it's, and it's at your... You and him and at your own pace. If you need to, to find a rock to rest a while on that path, God's cool with it. It's not, this is not legalism. This is growth in God. Everybody has their own pace on that path, and God understands. You know, he will take you step by step on this path, and on this path, he, the word will, cro- will come up and say, Believe this, believe this. Don't believe that lie. Don't believe this lie. It's a path that you're, you're walking on with the Lord. Just you and him. There's no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. You, <coughs> you are a son and a daughter of the Most High God, and he wants to, to take you on a, a growth path. Amen. Okay, the second lie that we, that we believe, prayer doesn't seem to work for me. Ever prayed and it didn't seem to work for, for you? You know, a lot of times we give up on prayer. We just, we, we pray and we pray and we say, what's the use? And, and prayer is something you gotta, kind of got to develop. You, and and it's, it's simply talking to God. But, you, but it, you'd be surprised. I'm, can I squeal myself a little bit more? There was a long time that, that I wouldn't pray with my wife in the morning. <clears throat> you, it's not, it's not, it's, you know, we're, I don't know why we get, we get self-conscious and, or get too busy that we won't set up a time every day to pray with the person you're doing life with. You know, and, and, and we, we, we're not as established in prayer like we, like we should be. And, and so... So I'm encouraging myself and us to think, rethink about our prayer life because it is important. And sometimes we put it on the shelf and it doesn't seem to work for us or we, have, we believe this lie, so why do it? 
or, or I would feel self-conscious if I prayed with my spouse. What in the heck? That's a lie right there. No, the, the person, you, if, if you've got a, a believing spouse, pray with them. Amen. Not just at dinner. <laughs> at lunch, too. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding you. <clears throat> but, no, make a habit. A prayer is a habit. Prayer is, 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 is something we need to do. You know, and, and I know that, that we don't really believe in it that much because I have observed, not a criticism, an observation of, of prayer services through, through my life. I have observed when I go to, not a criticism, okay, I have observed when we have a prayer meeting, not very many people show up because we're not developed. We don't feel secure in prayer. And I want to encourage you to, to push in on it. Lean in on, 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 a, on, a, on a more active prayer life. Peter, Peter got the news from Jesus. <clears throat> Jesus said, you know, Peter, Satan is demanding to sift you like wheat. How would you like to get that report? <laughs> yeah, you know, Jesus isn't, isn't lying. He, he never, never lies. But, he, but he's telling you, hey, you know that uh, Satan guy? Yeah, he wants to sift you like wheat. He wants to... Uh, Pretty much do have his way with you. And, but Jesus said, I prayed. I prayed for you. I prayed that your faith would not fail. But after you go through this, he even gave me a little prophetic word. He says, after you go through this, strengthen your brothers. And, and Peter, for some reason, he's, he's a guy who always needed prayer. So he, got, he gets himself into another situation after the death, burial, resurrection, day of Pentecost, the church gets started, and then all of, a sudden, all of a sudden, everybody starts coming after the disciples. They'd already killed James, <coughs> and they put Peter in jail. So once again, Peter needs prayer. So, so they, the church sets up a prayer meeting, and they start praying. This is all true. It's in Acts. You can, you can check out my... Just read it in Acts. So, so anyway, they set up a prayer meeting, <clears throat> and they start praying fervently through the night for Peter because they just killed James. And if they're going to kill James, why not just go ahead and start snuffing a bunch of them out, you know? So, so Peter's in jail. They're praying in a prayer meeting, and, and an angel comes and, and, and walks Peter right out of jail, just... Walks him past the, the guards, walks him past everybody. He walks out, he walks to the, the, the door where they're having the prayer meeting. The, the, they can't believe it's even Peter there. You know, and, 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 and they're amazed that their prayer was getting answered, right? So Peter comes and his prayer was answered. The Bible says of the fervent, effectual prayer of a righteous man accomplishes much. Amen. So, so don't buy that lie that, you know, praying isn't, doesn't amount to anything. Prayer is important. Prayer is talking to God. What did I put as a verse for the prayer? It says, but certainly God has heard. He has given heed to the voice of my prayer. God hears you. God hears. He, he's that kind of God. He hears our smallest prayers. In fact, I think that sometimes he wants to impress us by answering the smallest of small prayers. Just the tiny, you know, it's like, like I, you know, you just walk by something that's a material thing that, that you got a fancy for. You know, it might be a, a fishing reel or whatever it is, you know. And, <clears throat> and you just walk by and say, oh, God, I wish I had that fishing reel. And then all of a sudden, all of a sudden, all of a sudden you know, weeks later, all, all of a sudden that sh fishing reel just shows up. <laughs> just like, like, see, I can answer those little bitty things. I, th I think God delights in answering those small. Well, if he delights in those small little prayers of our heart, how much more the, 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 big, the big weighty things? Just stay at it. Keep pushing in. Keep being a prayer. Uh, organize. Get together with people. Pray, pray a prayer of agreement. The Bible says where if two or more agree is touching anything in prayer, it will be done by our fathers in heaven. Keep praying. Keep pushing in. 
don't, don't believe the lie that my prayers don't work. All right? Amen. Done with that point? Let's go to the third point. <clears throat> the promises of God seem to be out of my reach. Ever, th- ever think that? You know, back to what I kind of was alluding to at the beginning. It just seems like it works for somebody else, but it doesn't work for me. And I don't, I don't understand it all. I don't underst- I've had my prayers answered, and I've had them not answered. And I can't tell you why one prayer gets answered and another prayer doesn't. I, I, I wish I could tell you that. But I do know that in baseball, if you hit, hit every other time, you're batting 500, and that's pretty good. <laughs> so... You know, you know, I but but I've had mighty prayers answered, like, like, uh, just mighty pr- prayers answered, and um, I can I tell you another story? Might as well tell you a story. <coughs> okay. Story, story, story. The promises of God are for us. Yeah. It is for us, and and life sends us hand grenades a lot of the time, and we don't know what to do about it. And, and I may have mentioned last time I was with you is, is my first wife passed away from cancer when I was 37, 30, 35 years old, 35, 37. She pa- and, and, I, and I did everything. I believed God. I, I fasted. I prayed. Took, went to healing schools. I mean, we did everything. And, and I do the exact same thing all over again. There's... You know, I, the church was praying. The church was great. People were always giving us meals and just rallying around us. Everything. And I don't know why my wife got, got a, a, to go to heaven early. My brother went to heaven early, too. I guess maybe there's a, something in there that I don't know about. But <coughs> heaven's not such a bad thing, in case you <laughs> didn't know. So, 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 so anyway, she passed away. So I'm, I'm 20, or excuse me, I'm 37 years old about, and, and I'm, I got four children, and, and the promises of God are a wife. That's a pretty good promise. He who finds a wife finds a good thing and obtains favor from the Lord. So, so that's, that's, that's my promise that I was looking at. I, in fact, I went to a restaurant with uh, Proverbs 31, you know, about the virtuous woman and whatnot, and I read about that, and I thought, is there anyone that I know that's a virtuous woman who's a believer that wouldn't mind taking on four kids? <laughs> I don't know about that. <laughs> but you know, God had someone. God had someone. A lovely wife. Amen. Amen. The promises of God, they're for us. They're, they're for us, you know. Life hands us hand grenades, and they sometimes go off and, and make... But God always comes in, and he's a repairer of the breach. He, he fixes... He fixes things. He fixes things in our life. So, so as we delight ourselves in the Lord, He does give us the desires of our heart. And that's, that's the final point that I'll make. Um, let's read. Okay. It says, Delight yourself in the Lord, and He will give you the desires of your heart. That's a promise. And, 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 and we can stand on the promises of God. Everybody say, it is written. It is written. It is written. And so you, you can, don't buy the lie. The lie will come. It'll, it'll press in on you and it'll tell you that God's not going to do this and God's not going to do that. And in fact, you don't even deserve it. If, that's, that's a big lie. You don't deserve it. You don't deserve, you know, look at everything you did. Well, it is written. You've been made the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. You know, there is therefore no condemnation 
for those who are in Christ Jesus. You just shove that back in the devil's face. Just, it is written, it is written. That's why it's good to know your Bible. Read it Amen. as often as you can because it's ammunition. It's a weapon in your hand. It is written, it is written. Know the Word of God. Um, train yourself in it and read it. So look, we're going to read Matthew. Matthew chapter 6. Jesus addresses how to live what I, would, what I would consider victoriously, a victorious Christian life. In Matthew 6, 25, it says, For this reason I say to you, do not be worried about your life as to what you will eat or what you will drink, nor for your body as to what you will put on. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothing? Look at the birds of the air that they do not sow, nor do they gather into barns, yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not worth much more than they? And who of you, by being worried, there's that word worried again, who of you, by being worried, can add a single hour to his life? And why are you worried about clothing? Observe how the lilies of the field grow. They do not toil, nor do they spin. Yet I say to you that not even Solomon in all his glory clothed himself like one of these. But if God so clothed the grass of the field, which is alive today and tomorrow is thrown into the furnace, will he not much more clothe you? You have a little faith. Do not worry then, saying, What will we eat? Or what will we, or what, what will we drink? Or what will we wear for clothing? For the Gentiles eagerly seek all these things. For your heavenly Father knows that you need all these things. But seek first. Everybody say, seek first. The, his kingdom and his righteousness and all these things will be added unto you. Position yourself with God. Just get on that path. We're going we're gonna to sing a, a song just a song of blessing. And I want you to receive it in a new way today because the Lord wants to bless you. His promises are for you. They, they are eternal. And no matter what life is bringing your way, God's pushing back with blessings. God pushes back with blessings all the time.